Welcome to Ascension Integration with Sandra Walter. Hi, welcome to Ascension Integration. I'm Sandra Walter. This week I'm speaking about multidimensional awareness. And what that is, is when you get to a certain point in your ascension process, you're going to go through this phase where you begin to experience yourself in other dimensions. And I'll get into dimensional structure in a minute just for clarity, but I wanted to decipher first between astral journeys, dream time journeys, third eye journeys, and multidimensional awareness. So in an astral travel journey, which is the traditional experience of leaving the body but still staying connected via the silver cord, either through the solar plexus or the high heart, depending on where you are in your path. But that's when you're exploring the astral plane. You'll get into a lot of uh, lower or even higher fourth dimensional expressions, meeting a lot of different beings, taking a look around the planets, going to other star systems, those kinds of astral travel are taking a look at what is outside of, of your own self. And in dream time, dream time are our fourth dimensional journeys that are a can be metaphoric and can be also real timelines converging and crossing and soul contracts and agreements getting worked out. There's a lot of activity during our dream time right now. So if you're experiencing dreams that you can actually remember or that are very lucid, your dream time journey is within that fourth dimension, which I'll explain in a minute, is very large. And then the third kind of journey, besides the astral travel and the dream time journey, is a third eye journey, where your third eye pineal pituitary complex is actually taking a look at higher dimensional realms and you're going to get a lot of geometry that's when you see a lot of different colored lights or different beings and those kinds of experiences present because on a dimensional level you're interacting with those those different dimensions and your third eye is actually showing you either information that has happened in the past or information that has happened in the future or information that is occurring right in your life stream so when we get into third eye journeys, which I'll do a show about uh, in a few weeks, that's a, a different expression than what I'm about to address. So multidimensional awareness is the experience of yourself in higher dimensions. And our dimensions are based on frequency. So let me get into dimensional structure just a little bit. And then, uh, and then I'll get into how you can decipher between whether you're having a multi-dimensional journey or just kind of traveling off in the astral. So our dimensions are based on frequency and the frequency frequency is a range of uh, is vibration and our dimensions are based on a, a range of frequency that provide a certain kind of experience. So right now we're experiencing this, this third dimensional, lower fourth dimensional expression, which is, again, just an experience that has parameters around it for what that experience can provide. And on this level, if you think of it in stair steps, we have 11 different expressions of us all exploring this life stream in different ways. Every time you have a major decision to make, part of you has, is exploring that other decision, part of you is exploring different choices, and we have all of this multidimensionality, all these parallel choices and parallel realities occurring at the same time. So in this third dimensional structure, we have uh, just like limits on how much we can experience within this. And when we begin to raise our vibration, we kind of cross the bridge to that higher world. A lot of people experience bridging of the worlds and shamans and such have been called um, bridgers for, for bridging worlds and the worlds are, are simply the parameters for that dimensional experience. They're experiencing a higher frequency expression of, of life. 
So we have all these expressions going on at the same time. And as you move from, if you think of it as like a platform that has first, second, and third dimension structured, and there's a little box around it. And that's how much you can experience. And what it does is it gives us parameters for the planetary expression, for consciousness, for form, if you need form to, to resonate in a certain vibration. As you stair-step down from higher dimensions, this lower dimension is very physical. It's very dense. And the first through third dimensions are what we call the incarnate dimensions. So this, this incarnate expression is a gross physical expression. It's a, it's a carbon-based expression of form. And this carbon-based expression is resonating to what they call the first density. So that dimension one through three is first dense density, and that's a harmonic universe. There's other terms for it. But this first density is first through third dimensions, what we call 1D, 2D, 3D. And that expression is kind of locked into a certain kind of form because carbon is a very dense material. It's a very dense expression that holds life. And part of the ascension process is stepping out of that carbon-based structure to resonate at a carbon silica structure, a more crystalline structure, as we explore the next level of dimensions. Now, the next level of dimensions is dimensions four, five, and six. Now, the fourth dimension is very wide. It's very vast. There's a lot of flexibility and room for interpretation because you still have a lot of that carbon structure in your expression, but it, uh, it hasn't reached the level where fear or any kind of density really uh, prevents it from, I'm sorry, I just like totally blanked out there, where it prevents um, very much like what just happened to me, <laughs> where it prevents a higher expression from being fully expressed in the physical. So we're still physical, and this is a soul level. The soul is a six-dimensional expression, and as we move through ascension, we're going into this fourth dimensional expression, high fourth dimensional expression, and then eventually into a fifth dimensional expression of ourselves. And that means that we're changing our physical structure in order to resonate with that higher frequency. Because again, these are just bandwidths of frequency that create this dimension in which to experience a certain kind of reality. And in the fourth, fifth, and sixth dimensional layer, that's more of a carbon-silicon-based structure. And as we kind of leave that soul level, then we get into more etheric matter. So this is still a very physical expression, even in the fourth, fifth, and sixth dimension. You're still connected to the physical, which is why when we, we think about our soul being our highest expression, what does our soul want and everything. Our soul is in charge of that, that physical dimension. That's why we're experiencing that connection to soul right now is because the soul is the highest dimensional expression of physical matter. So we're still very connected to it and it is very connected to us. But again, when you think about all of these stair steps down, we've got the six dimensional expression of soul and then we've got 12 expressions below that that are on that fifth dimensional level. And then you've got 12 more dimensional expressions coming off of that fifth dimension into the fourth. And then 12 coming down into the third dimensional expression of you. And as you go back, we're not just, it's not 12 up to the fourth and 12 up to the fifth, but literally the fourth dimensional expression of you has these 12 expressions and then there's 12 fourth dimensional expressions that go up into a fifth dimensional expression so you can see it gets very multi-dimensional and what it is is we tend to think of ourselves very linear kind of like you know straight out of source and now we're on the planet and now I'm going back you know it's it's not like that at all the the creator source whatever you want to call it 
God uh, does n is a, an extremely creative being. I mean, we're talking about the source of all that is. So let's not put our parameters around this is exactly what I am and that's it. If any uh, artist or creative person or a, a, an intelligent mind can explore outside of the box at all and imagine something more expressive then it's it's already occurred so we're talking about source stepping down so let's not limit ourselves to one expression in fifth one expression in fourth one expression in 3d uh, that isn't true at all and as we step up beyond the soul level that is when that next layer that seventh eighth and ninth dimensional structure which is also called the over soul level is a more etheric matter. It is completely crystalline based and it doesn't have the density of the physical at all anymore. So even though when you get into a fifth dimensional s expression you're still playing with form and even at the sixth dimensional level you're still manipulating form somewhat. When you get into the seventh, eighth, and ninth dimension it becomes less physical that's more of a light body expression but it's more collective and I'll get into the collective layer of that in a little bit. The step above that and again this isn't hierarchy this is just for an example because it all is happening all at once in the same place technically. So this next level this next dimensional frequency range that provides the, the reality above that is the 10th 11th and 12th dimension and that is what's called the, the avatar or the Christos level, the crystalline level, the Christ level. And that 10th, 11th, 12th dimensional light is a, it's a liquid light. It's a pre-matter form of consciousness. It is extremely collective. And when you think of collective, if you think of a 12th dimensional expression having all of those other expressions below it, if you want to consider it like that, stair-stepping down into all of these expressions, by the time you come back and gather all of that up into a 12th dimensional consciousness, you can understand collective in a new way. We understand that we are all connected, we understand that the field is constantly interacting and providing all of these experiences, and at a 12th dimensional level, when you get into that liquid light pre-matter state, that level of consciousness eliminates identity altogether, which I have experienced um, very little identity in that oversoul level, that 7th, 8th, and ninth dimension. But when you get into the 10th, 11th, 12th dimensional level, that avatar Christos level, that liquid light is so intertwined with everything that it there there is no separation of thought there's no individual identity you still have collaboration and collectives of a certain kind of expression but it's much more harmonious it's it's very pure it seems to be unadulterated and unaffected by any kind of uh, manipulation or ill will. And I'm sure that, it, you know, certain levels of duality ex exist you know, all the way up the, this ladder, but the, the sense of separation is, is nil for, for me, but I haven't gone levels above that, which I'll get to in a second. So that level is, uh, it's very flowing and, and and a, a very different kind of expression. And because it isn't physical, you don't experience body at all, or light body, or even collective kind of expressions. It's more of a, um, a, a pre-matter liquid kind of state, which is, it's really interesting. It's very pure light consciousness. And I'll, I'll get into that when I explain the, the expression that I experienced in that level. And above the 12th dimensional level, gets a little foggy for me. And I know that 13th, 14th, and 15th 
dimensional frequency range that Rishi higher self level that's above all of this, even the, the, the Christed level, is an antimatter level. And I think that's why I haven't experienced it in my journeys. It's a, it's a primal light. That is harmonic universe number five. That's density number five, where it's almost like working purely with the field at that point. Yes, we're working with the field all the way down the ladder, but that seems to be the doorway to pure source consciousness. And I understand that dimensions are infinite. There is no, okay, we go up to fifth dimensional level and then bang, we're source. <laughs> it's, it's very, it just keeps going and going and parallel realities and timelines are also infinite. This is a being that is expressing itself in a, an extremely broad, huge, uh, colossal way. So from, from this density as a, as a bunch of earthling humans uh, trying to understand the dimensional structure, it, uh, it gets a little complicated beyond that. So I'm going to stick to 12th dimension and down just for this broadcast until something else presents because as these things unfold, we access more and more knowledge and more and more information coming in, which is really ex an exciting part of the ascension process for me, at least. So our, what happens in these dimensions is the, the resonance of the planet has a lot to do with how we are experiencing our reality. And this is something that I was, I was just listening to Greg Braden, who is brilliant, wh what a wonderful man he is, explaining why we're experiencing the speed up of time. And he was talking about how the Schumann resonance, which is 7.83, or used to be rather, has changed, it changed dramatically in the 90s. Now it's hanging out around 14 megahertz and it goes all the way up to 50 every day. But as we, as we resonate to that, that pulse of the planet, which is that Schumann resonance, our cells are tuned into that pulse and they try to match it. So as the pulse gets faster, our cells are trying to keep up. And that's why we're experiencing, along with the, the thinning of the magnetosphere, that's why we're experiencing this sense of time speeding up. It's literally our cells are trying to vibrate faster in order to keep up with the pulse of the planet. And that's why we're experiencing this speed up in time. But this is very connected to dimensional structure because our cells are attempting to vibrate faster in order to resonate with a certain bandwidth of frequency, a certain bandwidth of dimensions. And as the planet changes dimension, because the frequency again is providing that expression of reality, as the planet changes, changes frequency and vibrates faster, our cells begin to vibrate faster and we start experiencing those different dimensions. So we're all going on this journey together and Again, it's entirely possible that at the end of this year or in the year after that some of us will be able to experience fifth dimensional expressions of, of Earth because we'll be able to change the frequency within ourselves. That's that conscious ascension process of getting your vibration to match a certain frequency that matches a certain dimension. It's just an expression of reality. It's not hierarchy. There's no worthiness involved. It's just a matter of choice. What do you want to experience? And if it is possible to experience a fifth dimensional frequency of the planet or of oneself all the time and kind of abandon the lower vibrational expression, then so be it. I, I say let's let's try it. So this is what happens <laughs> when you start to do that. So consciously, as we increase the vibration within our bodies, and it depends on how you're doing this. If you are meditating, eating differently, moving differently, thinking differently, doing your clearing, changing your diet to speed up the vibration in your cells, doing a lot of cleansing, getting rid of all the 
emotional baggage that we've had and starting to activate all of these light codes and harmonics that are coming in with this photonic light frequency that we're moving through during the shift, if you're doing all that, you're going to start feeling a lot of changes in your body, which is part of the ascension process. And this is very normal. This, it, these are just adjustments to the body vehicle because all of a sudden we are consciously saying, okay, body vehicle, uh, let's ascend. And if you're consciously doing this and doing the invocations and decrees and body work and spiritual work necessary to vibrate your cells to a very higher frequency, we're talking from going from 9 million megahertz per second at the highest expression in, in fourth dimension to popping into a, a another dimensional expression, which is hundreds of millions of megahertz per second so we we have a there's a big frequency shift yes we're being amplified by the planet and by the photonic light but it's very conscious because the body consciousness we have to remember is separate so we are in command our higher levels this higher dimensional expression of ourselves existing in fifth sixth dimensional level soul level higher self level however you want to call it, is now consciously being welcomed into the body vehicle. And we used to think that the body vehicle was in charge, which is why the lower levels, those lower chakras were in charge for so long. Ego, emotion, mind, completely in control of the body vehicle. And now that we're, our planet has changed frequency and our cells are starting to catch up, trying to keep up with that vibration, we realize that the mind and the ego emotion and emotions have nothing to do with us. They, they are locked in to an expression that doesn't serve us anymore as the frequency changes. So as that dissolves, breaks apart, in some instances uh, tries to fight for its survival, as we abandon that and let it go and retrain those things, we are not leaving this dimension without our ego or the mind or the emotions they are simply changing and we are retraining them to support a higher expression of ourselves so as we go through this ascension process we are changing the vibration within ourselves within the dna activating these crystalline structures that have not been active in a long time and again the awakening term the term awakened i am awake is merely dormant structures that used to be asleep are now activated so it's it's not that someone who has not awakened is has anything mentally or emotionally wrong with them is just that their structures are responding to the change in the frequency of the planet in a much different way and there's a, a lot of other things involved with soul contracts and family monads and everything but we won't discuss that today so multi-dimensional awareness what occurs is portals will present. And when I say portals and stargates and use terms like that, a lot of the time I sense that people think it is something outside of the self. It's going to present you know, across the yard or something and they're going to walk through it, which is entirely possible. Yes, that's physical stargates or, or dimensional stargates or whatever do present in that way. But when we're talking about exploring just us, just our higher expressions, that portal, that stargate is going to open up right within us. And we've often heard our third eye re referred to as a stargate portal, and it is because it will grant you access to the other dimensional expressions of yourself, as well as others, but let's just talk about us. So what occurs? First of all, intention is the key because you want to be in command of this journey this journey does not involve other beings saying hey come over here and walk through this thing or hook up to this thing or, or whatever it is straight in the body and you are in constant contact with your higher self so you are going to hear intuitively the direction of what you're experiencing, where you're going, and what is occurring. And what happens for me 
is my my third eye will open up and for for beginners when you're you begin meditating you start seeing the big eye the big eye in your in your mind's eye that is the third eye and simply if you can just open it up like the iris of a camera and just move your consciousness through it and I, I say move your consciousness or touch it with your consciousness because we have to understand that our consciousness is how we move around in these different dimensional expressions. So if you're thinking that it's a physical move, it is not. So you are looking at your third eye and just zoom in on it. Just allow your consciousness to move in to that eye and as it opens up, you begin to be the experience of being in your higher dimensional self. Now we also have what I call a, a multi-dimensional operating system, which is something that the Arcturians have been um, calling it as well. And that, that system unlocks that experience that we used to be able to tap into and are now relearning as we go through the shift. So as these, this portal opens up as you move through your third eye it may not present as a third eye journey sometimes it presents as a vesica pisces for me sometimes it looks like a star like a hollywood type stargate with spinning lights and long chambers of rushing lights going by and and real travel kind of thing but the th but the thing i want to focus on here is that it's not leaving the body and what I experienced last October was an intense amplification in my body to the point where it was vibrating and shaking a little bit as I was getting into this. And I was asking for this. I, I want to make that clear that the intention was there. I want to exper experience my higher dimensional expressions. Show me. And commanding, because we have to remember that we're stepping into our mastery, commanding as master of my own consciousness and my own body vehicle that I tap into this experience was what got me into this. My body began to vibrate, the energy around me began to radiate, and I it was a, a very, it's not electric, it feels finer than electric bolts. It's, it's a, a very subtle vibration that then got more and more intense. But I felt an expansion where everything is occurring right within the same space. And I know I explained this on my blog last year too of my first experience of being shown my own ascension because I had asked my guides and, and my star families over and over again show me what my ascension is going to look like. And I just wanted to become more familiar with it. <laughs> so uh, when it presented, I would be like, aha, that's it. And they presented a Vesica Pisces shaped, uh, Vesica Pisces is when you have two overlapping circles and that, that nice little egg shape that's in the middle um, is, is what you walk through. And it's very much like birth. It's very feminine. It's, it's very similar to the feminine body structure. I mean, this is where that all comes from. So as you move through this Vesica Pisces, and again, moving into it with my consciousness as my guides presented this shape, it was instantaneous. It wasn't even passing through the Vesica Pisces gateway. It was stepping into it and experiencing myself here, myself there, and not outside of my body. It was in the same space, which the very, the very first time I experienced that, and literally was five or 10 seconds, it was amazing and overwhelming because I finally got it. I finally understood, oh, it's not ascending, you know, leaving the body or going somewhere else or leaving the planet or whatever. I'm already there. I just have to change my frequency. And it was literally me here, me there, instantaneous, seamless, absolutely pure bliss. It was just, it was wonderful because I finally got it. And when I started taking these multidimensional journeys and asking to see the higher expressions of myself, it felt the same way. 
all of a sudden there's a little bit of a bump and all of a sudden there's an expansion where it's not and, and let me make it clear it's not the everywhere all at once meditative kind of expression it is right in the physical and all of a sudden it's you here you there and it keeps expanding outward and outward and outward as the as the dimensions go up which i found interesting because we're always talking about expanding our consciousness and expanding ourselves in order to experience ascension and higher consciousness and it literally feels like that when my body begins to vibrate and all of a sudden there's a little bit of a, a bump or a pop and again it's seamless it's not like whoosh and, and here I am it's seamless it's all of a sudden it's clink I'm there as I start to experience that I, I realize okay now higher self show me what is my expression and it's not like here's another point of clarity it's not like when you take a past life regression and you have to look down and look around and figure out where you are it was that was pretty instant yes there was a lot of curiosity about looking around the the different places that i was but i didn't it was like i didn't have to figure out where i was i always asked my higher self what dimension is this but at the same time I'm kind of experiencing that I am my higher self at that point. So everything is, gets a little more instantaneous as you, as you go up the ladder. So here is, here's what I experienced. So the first time I made the, the expansive jump through that multidimensional portal that is all within, I was on a light ship and it was a six dimensional expression, which surprised me because I had always associated six dimension with soul level and somehow soul level was was this etheric being <laughs> that was you know directly connected to source and there was like, I mean I, I grew up Roman Catholic so my my experience my my uh, mental construct around that was source soul me and you know I, I've learned that it's nothing like that but I had always kind of uh, connected the soul level to an expression that was this, you know, beautiful light being. And here I was on a light ship with other friends, not human friends, but, but other, uh, other friends of other races, and not, we weren't all the same race, experiencing this um, just being being on a ship, and my hands are on a keyboard, some kind of control panel, and the funny, the funny bit about it was I expanded into this expression and I'm kind of staring across, the, across this console at the beings that were standing around me and they're all giving me this knowing look and me myself am smirking because we all knew that the lower levels were coming up for a, a look around the ship, <laughs> which was which was really interesting because it, I found it humorous that me myself and my my friends, the, my coworkers, my my colleagues, all knew that the lower lower level Sandra from Earth was coming up for a look around the ship, and it, it was it was a very it was a funny moment. And it, it didn't last that long. It, that was only a couple of minutes that I was actually on the ship and I, I started, um, and I think that was just my own consciousness uh, that, that ended that journey because it started, it started overwhelming me a little bit because there were, it felt, um, it felt so casual. And that, that again was a challenge to the mental constructs that I had put around reuniting with my star family or my higher dimensional friends or whatever, because I had always thought, oh, it's going to be this beautiful homecoming and they're, they're going to embrace me with all this love and welcome back. And yet here I was in this lightship expression 
which also felt like you were very connected to the ship, like the ship was not very physical. It was more of a manifestation of thought, which I'll get into uh, later on. But the matter-of-fact attitude from my colleagues and from me, myself, taking a look around, I, I realized I've never left, so there is no grand reunion. That expression of me that's on that ship, it just has a fragment of itself experiencing fourth dimensional shadow of third dimensional consciousness on Gaia. So that higher expression of me has never left. There's no great reunion. There was a bit of a smirk about, yes, it's it's the shift. It seemed like, of course, your lower levels are going to come up and take a look around and congratulations. Or But there wasn't like a big party or anything. It was just a, a knowing, like, yep, it's time. And everyone kind of smirked at each other. And again, the smirk is telepathic. And... It started to, I, I started to get a little mental about it because I realized at that moment, oh, I've never left. There is no grand reunion and this, you know, welcoming of angels back to, you know, heaven or whatever that I had associated with, with ascension, you know, because of my Catholic background. Um, that, that all was completely dissolved when I was like, oh, and now I'm going to be on the ship. Okay. And also knowing that that wasn't just one, that was only one expression of myself in that dimension. And when I realized that I had kind of jumped over the, the 5D expression altogether, and because I was thinking, hey, where, where's the big reunion? How come no one's surprised that I'm taking a look around? That's when I consciously asked to see my fifth dimensional expression because my higher self was saying, this is six, six dimension right away it was as soon as i thought it halfway through the thought of what dimension is it? six okay then i asked well can i see the fifth dimensional expression because i associate fifth dimensional expression with that higher expression of new earth and that that place that all the light workers have been focusing on with the crystalline grid and i, I was thinking what about gaia and and the the thing about being on the light ship was there was a there was an intention or or a focus rather on all of us being very tied in to what was experience what was being experienced on earth there seemed to be a focus on earth and what was occurring with her and the people there and it was that that made me feel warm and fuzzy to know that there are um not only higher expressions of myself, but these these races, you know, a, a lot of these beings and races very focused on what is occurring on the planet. It seems to be very important. Um, it also feels from from that point of view, from that perspective, it feels like it's all, all is well. And now we just have to ride out the last steps of it. There's a lot of calm to the the, the battle part of it as far as uh, releasing her from all of these these lower fourth dimensional constructs but it it seemed like there was a nice calm clear focus on this is what we're doing right now and I really you know and, and I have to share this with you I really enjoyed that state of consciousness that doesn't have a lot of of distraction and to doing like well we have to do this we have to do that it's just in a, a feeling of of course it's a very so it is and there is hardly I didn't experience ego in that expression and I, I continue to not experience ego in that expression and I think it's because we associate ego with being this me 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 mine 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 identity kind of thing which dissolves in my experience after the fifth dimension and that that collective of course always for the highest good exists in that six dimensional frequency that i experienced okay so let me step down because the next thing i asked for was what about fifth dimension and the moment that i thought about that it's my expansion tuned in it's like your your consciousness that expansion and consciousness 
is is so pliable when you get in that state where there's this this vibration and it's literally just changing and expanding the vibration it's like tuning a radio it's amazing so the moment i asked for the fifth dimensional expression i was immediately in a room full of what i would call light beings that still had a a residue of the physical there was still a physical expression, but it was not solid. It was very light. And this fifth dimensional expression that I was involved in, there was a, a whole room full of us, and we all looked, we, we looked different. We're not robots or angels or anything like that. Uh, but we were all, we all had a, a model of the earth with the crystalline grid around it that was glowing just beautiful brilliant light coming off of it and we all had our hands on either side of of the globe and were literally just doing energy work we're all focused on amplifying this crystalline grid and that may be the expression that i tap into when i work with children of the sun because i've experienced that feeling that that sense of being the watchers where you are outside of the planet and that expression is just focused on getting getting the planet through for the highest good it seems like you are sent there um as a as a not a command but a request from source to do that and there was this whole room and again the when i say room it doesn't mean uh, that there were walls it's more like there were rows rows and rows of us um all doing this and that expression was was beautiful it's just beautiful because there's just such focus it's like the kind of focus that i can get in a a lengthy meditation that kind of state where you where you have focus there's no to do or task list distraction or anything like that no mental levels just total focus and the last thing i remember about that expression was i glanced up to see how many of, of us there were in that in that space and when I looked up the the um, the the woman there was a woman next to me in the, in the same state and she looked up from her globe and just gave me this warm smile and again there was a kind of knowing that another expression of myself had stepped up into that expression and was just taking a peek around and her smile said to me telepathically my 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 lower expression has done the same thing and she just gave me this warm smile like welcome and it was beautiful it was just beautiful and that that led me to a curiosity okay then here's an expression of me focusing on the new earth amplifying the crystalline grid what about the expression of me that is actually experiencing Terra, the new fifth dimensional planet. And again, the moment I ask about that, I'm standing on the surface of New Earth. And just for clarity, New Earth means different things to different people. For me, New Earth means a fifth dimensional expression. And that's just because of the kind of work that I'm involved in. For some people, it means new paradigm transforming the expression that we're in now into the new paradigm and then that becomes the new earth um, and we don't know how long the expression of this planet will hang out in that fourth dimensional expression before it again takes a step into the fifth dimensional expression um, and it depends again what frequency you want to experience but when i say new earth i mean a fifth dimensional expression of new earth so i'm standing on the surface of new earth and i look across this this canyon which in immediately my higher self said new expression of the grand canyon which had water and it had beautiful sparkling like this aqua turquoise that i i just have not seen in this real pale 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 blue that i hadn't seen sparkling water flowing in these beautiful delicate veils i mean the grand canyon 
looks so harsh and, and desolate sometimes, and it's beautiful, but but to see it transformed into this place that was that was just sparkling and and alive and full of water and the the thing that gets overwhelming in my fifth dimensional new earth travels is that the interaction with living things trees flowers grasses water all the elementals it's so interactive that it can be kind of overwhelming because it's it feels th- this is when when I'm when I'm meditating and I meditate on new earth and get into that expression that's when I have what I call blissgasms <laughs> where your where your your kundalini is is so enthralled with that with the, and so um it, it's just pulsing through your body so much that you get that kind of orgasmic feeling of of bliss and when when I first started experiencing the, the blissgasm sensation, which literally just happened on the ten 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 for me, was the first time I experienced it. Uh, now it it has turned from a, a a hard pulsing kind of orgasmic feeling to a a state of consciousness where um, and I think that's why the Pleiadians uh, in like bringer of the bringers of the dawn. Uh, said you know it well our dimension feels like an orgasm all the time (laughs) and it it does because it's just it's so beautiful and so it just overwhelms the the senses and it's so blissy and beautiful and connected and that i i completely understand now where the tantric folks um have what the tantric folks have been talking about for thousands of years was that being a gateway to that experience and um it doesn't uh you know we've distorted sex into into different things but that that feeling if you can take all the egoic weird masculine feminine stuff that's been attached to it that feeling is um that freedom that that you feel in that fifth dimensional expression but my experience of the trees interacting with you and the second you think uh, you reach out toward a flower it starts toning and this this again this is probably just the flowers that I was standing nearby but they start singing in a way not with words but with tones and the the grass is is moving and the, the wind is is um caressing and the trees are communicating and it's very it's a it's a it's, it's a beautiful but a very interactive environment so when we talk about no separation that is a reality in that reality in that layer of frequency that is when that no separation game starts um really stepping up because literally you cannot think anything without something else picking it up and adding to it and it's it's so creative i just i love it it's so creative because you are able to um play with form not dominate it and control it but you're able to play with form it's a very mutual agreement with everything that is around you so there is no more manipulation and and control uh, and and the colors are incredible. The Grand Canyon, the, or whatever that canyon was, was this this beautiful coral type color. And again, the colors are something. And as a painter, ooh, I cannot wait <laughs> to to get my hands on those colors and and learn how to express with those colors because it's just going to be amazing. But um, very very different colors. And again, very collective. But it's not as collective as the six-dimensional expression. It's 5D seems more like a, a playground or a training ground for, uh, again, ascending to, to a higher frequency. And these are all levels of, of learning. So as we step up this ladder, we, we start to have access to what's available in these different different frequency ranges. So... Six dimensional experience, fifth dimensional experience, I asked for something as high as I could experience after that. 
because my body at this point is vibrating and starting to um, waver a bit. It, my, it, the experience of being in a purely collective vibration and that frequency, even though these experiences are only lasting for half a minute, a minute, a piece, it's, uh, it seems to be very taxing on the body and the consciousness itself in order to train yourself to linger in that frequency takes some, takes some, uh, some practice because there were times when New Earth especially where I just felt like I was going to pass out. So I asked for the highest expression that I could experience at that time and my, again, no other being, just my higher self, amplifies my and expands my consciousness and my frequency to me experiencing myself as part of this floating like a magenta silk scarf type being floating through the cosmos no just no worries no cares just exploring the universe floating around and this is not just me at this point. This is the cool thing about this, this uh, silk, we'll call it the silk scarf, <laughs> the scarf being, in the 12th dimensional scarf being, you, I did not feel like me. At that point, it was us. And that was very cool. Because even though there was a collective sense in the sixth dimensional expression of mission and focus, and fifth dimensional as well, in that 12th dimensional expression, there were there were no boundaries on my consciousness on my absolutely no physical and absolutely no individual thought it was it was just being this part of this collective floating consciousness that had color to it and was very um uh luminous but it's just, tr and I'm not even sure what we're doing. We, we were just floating around through, through the cosmos, and I, I don't go back there a lot. I, I do like to tap into that consciousness, but here's the thing. After experiencing that for a few moments and, and getting into it and experiencing and everything, my higher self just kind of brought me back and it was this this very clear message okay you have to step back and as I came back into my my dense self <laughs> my grounded self I my body just started to um to quiver and I could f all of a sudden I felt the exhaustion that was in my body and I was my higher self told me you know just Spend a few minutes before you open your eyes. Spend a few minutes, a few moments right here. You know, started to breathe, do some breath work. Started to slowly move my spine a little bit and just kind of check in with my physical self. And it, was, it wasn't it was like an astral journey where you're stepping back into your body. It was, it was within the body itself. So kind of breathing and coming back to that and slowly opening my eyes and then realizing how exhausted uh, my my body vehicle and my consciousness was at that point was um, was w was beautiful I mean it was it was exhausting and here's the thing I was flat out with vibrational flu for the next two days could not even touch a meditation for two days and the the whole time I was like, okay, I get it. Just I just have to adjust to this. But my body was so exhausted and so uh, worked by the frequency that it was um, it it was it it really took a lot of integration. And then the next time I experienced that, which was four days later, it only took me a day to recover. And typically now it only takes probably about twelve hours. For me to fully recover but i but here's the thing here's the interesting thing the more i take these journeys the more of these journeys that i go on the more i am beginning to experience those expressions 
right now. So I am beginning to feel me in the ship and me as the silk scarf and me on the other planets and me on the new earth and me working for the new earth all at the same time within my core, within my consciousness. And that is something that I think will be um, <laughs> interesting and challenging as we move through the shift, being aware of these other dimensional selves and then, wow, have you got to focus your consciousness or what? I mean, talk about brain fog. If I'm, even during this radio bro broadcast, the, the second I think about it, I'm there and I'm like, oh, okay, wait a minute. All right, I need to, because you're there at the same time, it's happening right now. So as you begin to be able to tune your consciousness and your, your vibration into these different expressions, you feel them instantly. You know, the instant I say 12 dimensional silk scarf, I, I can kind of feel it, you know, and it's all happening in the same space at the same time. So finally, understanding, you know, what this quantum physics is all about is miraculous for me because it's something I've been exploring for quite a few years. But it's something that as we move through the shift and through this ascension process, one of the first things I thought about after I experienced this for the first time was, oh my gosh, people are going to freak out. They're going to think it's like different beings or they're not going to know how to communicate with their higher self. Or I can see how this can be manipulated where other beings could step in and go, let me show you what is, and, and there is, there's none of that in that experience for me. It is very much commanded by the self, by the higher self, and very much directed from within. So if you're having journeys where other, other beings are, are taking you around or whatever, ask them if they are your guides to open up your multidimensional self and allow you to learn how to be in command of your own frequency and your own consciousness because this I feel is a good muscle to have as we move through the shift and not only that but we'll be able to not just teach people how to tap into it but teach people how to decipher and and tune their frequency to these different expressions and while it's extremely challenging to be aware of that at the same time I'm, there are days when I say how am I supposed to do this how am I supposed to exist in this frequency and be aware of so many different expressions at the same time? Because if I, if I tap into my consciousness on a different planet or star or light ship or whatever dimension, I instantly, the, it, it like peels off this, this layer of, of illusion and I really have to, I really have to focus, you know, sometimes I really have to focus on being right here right now and not, and also not lose touch with the higher dimensional expressions of myself. So that's going to be an interesting balancing act coming up in, uh, wow, probably this, this next year will be extremely interesting for what vibrations and what frequencies and dimensions you can tune into. Well, I'm out of time for today, so I and I hope you enjoyed me uh, going on about my multidimensional awareness. If you would like any assistance with your journey, please contact me at sandrawalter.com. I am an Ascension Counselor, and I would be happy to assist you in your journey or teach you a little bit more about these multidimensional travels of ours. And I hope that you have a beautiful and creative week. Thank you. This has been Ascension Integration with Sandra Walter. For more information on Ascension or Ascension Counseling, visit Sandra on the web at www.sandrawalter.com.